Hi, I'm Jason Bodak for Boris FX, and welcome to this tutorial on adding a tracked lens flare to your footage in DaVinci Resolve using Boris Continuum Complete 10 and the built-in Mocha BCC Planar Tracker. Now, if you've tried to add a lens flare to your footage before, you may have noticed it gets a little funky when the shot starts to move, because the lens flare isn't moving with your footage. Well, using BCC 10's Lens Flare 3D effect in combination with the Mocha Pixel Chooser feature, we're able to add a lens flare to even moving footage, as you can see in this clip right here. Taking a look at the first one, we have the sun in the corner right here with a little bit of movement. Now we have a lens flare attached to it and moving with the camera. We can see that the lens flare elements over here are responding exactly as you would to the camera movement. Now let's jump in and see how we can do this. So right here we have our shot and I have two nodes essentially laid out here. We see that we have our basic shot right here, but I really wanna pump that up a little bit using a lens flare. We're getting a tiny bit of a flare here, but not enough for my satisfaction. So what is the first thing we're gonna do? Well, because our clip is moving, as we can see right here, to add any type of realistic lens flare, we need to have that moving or responding as well to the movement in the footage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Mocha Pixel Chooser option built into Boris Continuum Complete 10 to help us with that. Now we have two nodes here. I'm gonna leave one for the lens flare 3D effect and one for our Pixel Chooser. I'm gonna go ahead and search for Pixel Chooser. and you'll find it in the BCC key and blend settings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over to the pixel chooser node, and you're gonna see it's gonna turn black. It turns black because our output is set to black and white matte. Now that's okay for right now because we're just gonna be using this to get some track data. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click launch Mocha, and Mocha BCC will launch. Now, if you're not familiar with Mocha, Mocha is a planar tracker, meaning you can think of it that it's a texture tracker. It's not a 3D point tracker where you might have to have a point of contrast to track. It essentially uses textures or planar surfaces to help us track. With a point tracker, I would have to pick a building versus the sky or a very specific point to be able to give it good track data. The beauty of Mocha is that we're able to track almost anything that has a tiny bit of texture. And I'm gonna show you how we can do that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and using my X spline, which you can select right here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a box around our sun because this is where I want our flare to go. And I'm gonna right click to get out of there and I'm gonna go ahead and use our track forward button. Now watch as it tracks forward, how this really sticks right over here to the sun. And as the camera moves a little bit, it's still gonna stick right there. Now, if I were using Resolve's built-in tracker, I may have some issues based on the fact that there's really not any points in here. There's very little data for it to compare. I would have to choose a building or something else in the background that has a real point to it. But the problem is I want this to go really far into the distance. And while it might work, it's not gonna be as accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at our track right here. And we see that it stayed locked on to our sun right there, even as it goes off screen just a little bit, which is perfect. Now, one other thing that I wanna do is I wanna turn on the show planar surface tool. And you're gonna see a box come up here. Now, right now, it's exactly where I want it. And the reason and what this is going to do is this is going to tell us where the center point of our flare is going to emanate from. Now, if I needed to manipulate this a little bit, I can go ahead and move the corners of the planar surface to get it exactly where I want it using this track data to put this planar surface in the sky right here. Now we're essentially done in Mocha. You can export a project if you know you're gonna to wanna to return to this and it'll save your Mocha project on your hard drive. But for this case, I'm gonna go ahead and export tracking data. Now you have two options here. You have BCC center point and BCC corner pin. Now for this operation, we're gonna go ahead and export the BCC center point. And the reason why is we want the very center of this planar surface to be recorded. And that's exactly what center point does. This is what we're gonna feed into lens flare 3D to show it where to put the flare and how to move it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And as you can see, I've already tracked this, but I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite that. I'm gonna name it flare track just to keep things organized and let's overwrite it. So now if you know you're gonna be back here, go ahead and save your project by exporting project, but we're pretty much done in Mocha. So I'm gonna exit out of it and I'm not gonna save. Now what you can essentially do now is either delete this node or remove that OFX filter because we've gotten what we need from it. 
Now I'm gonna go over to Lens Flare 3D. I'm gonna go ahead to my OFX filters and look up Lens Flare. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag BCC Lens Flare 3D to this node right here, and you'll see a bunch of things pop up on your screen here. You'll also see that the flare is right on our footage, and it's unfortunately in the wrong place. Now also, if I play this back, you'll see that the flare is not moving at all with our footage. So we have a little bit of a problem right there, but let me show you how we can fix that. First things first, let's go ahead and get this flare to move exactly as the footage is doing, and let's get the flare to go over here, right where the sun is. Now we're gonna go ahead and import our Mocha BCC data into this filter, and you get it by going all the way down to the Motion Tracker tab. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open this up by clicking the arrow right there. So I'm gonna to go to Tracker Data and Load. Now I'm gonna go navigate to the folder where I saved my BCC center point data, and I'm gonna double click on it. Now you'll notice one thing if I zoom in on our footage right here, you'll notice a red line. What this red line is doing is essentially showing that not only do we have track data, but this is what it saw the movement as, meaning it's gonna start over here, and it's gonna end over there. Now that we see that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off show motion path so that it doesn't get in our way. But that's just a good way to check to see if your tracking data has been successfully imported. Now I'm gonna to go to apply and put to light source. Now you'll see that our lens flare is essentially right on top of our sun. Now if I zoom out, we can actually see that the flare is going to move with our footage. Now, because the lens flare is sort of subtle, I'm gonna go up to our main controls and I'm gonna boost the global intensity just for this demonstration so we can see this. We're gonna make it a tiny bit obnoxious, but I just wanna get the point across. Now, if you go ahead and watch this clip, you'll see that our lens elements are moving with our tracked footage in a much more natural and realistic way than just pasting on a flare on top. Now, we're not quite done yet because we have a lot more control with this lens flare. Now, we got a neat lens flare on here it's attached to where we want it to in the shot. It's reacting naturally to our camera movement, but maybe I'm not liking this flare. So one of the big benefits of Boris Continuum Complete is many filters have an effects browser. And if I open up the effects browser, we can see that there is a huge amount of variety in not only starting with a preset that's built into here, but we can continue to customize it. Once we get back from choosing a preset, I'm gonna go ahead and choose something that's a little bit more subtle than what we have right now. Now you can see there's a massive variety here and they're great starting points. Now I'm gonna go ahead and with this green tactical because I wanna be a little bit funky and also I want you to see what we're able to do with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And you can see now that this lens flare has been applied to our footage and tracked with the camera movement that we pulled out using Mocha BCC. Now there's a couple weird things happening here and I'm gonna show you how to get around them. Now the flare seems to be taking over as we get to the edge. So we need some customization to make this a little bit more natural for our clip, because this is a little bit off-putting in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset our global intensity and set it specifically for this lens flare. So I'm gonna take it down a little bit. A quick resolve tip, if you're looking to change these very minutely, go ahead and go over the number and you'll see a double arrow come up and you can go ahead and move it very minutely till you get where you want it to. Now we have some lens elements here but the first thing that I wanna get rid of is this trigger once it gets on the edge. Now, for some people, this might be a good thing, especially if you're going into another shot, but this is a little bit obnoxious for me. So let's go down. Now, if you go to flare trigger and drop it down, you'll see that we have trigger on edge enabled. Now, if I disable this and play it back, you'll see that it no longer takes over the frame. Now, not every flare is going to do this, but just know if you do have that issue with it sort of flaring off on the edge, you can control it using the flare trigger, reduce it, make it more intense, a huge amount of customization here. Now that I have it going off the edge the way that I like it, I wanna mess around with these lens elements here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close flare trigger, and you can see that we have rays, fog, polygon, discs, hollows, glows, faded ring, stripe, chroma hoop, chroma fan, elliptical caustic, star caustics, and a huge variety of different elements that can be turned on and off to make this flare unique and yours. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a lot of these options so you can see them. First, I'm gonna turn on fog and add a little bit of haziness in there. And I like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. Now, some of these are gonna be pretty minute, so if you're not seeing them, you can drop it down 
and raise the intensity or scale and even set a specific color. Now I'm not really liking that color, but I'm actually gonna disable polygons for right now. If you see glow is changing right over here. If I go down and drop down the glow menu, I don't like that it's white. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our sky color. And there we go. I've added a glow based off our sky color. And if I turn it on and off, you can see that we have a little bit of glow going on right there. So I'm gonna leave a glow there. I'm gonna turn on a chroma hoop and we got a little bit of a lens element over here. I'm gonna turn on a chroma fan and we get a little bit of chroma lens distortion coming from the flare. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna turn on chromatic aberration. Again, this is your flare to customize. You can use red and blue shift, purple fringe, or even have a chromatic aberration with your own custom color. Now that you've seen exactly what we can do, let's see what the flare looks like in action now. Now this is a pretty overwhelming flare, I agree, simply because we enabled so many of the different options in there, but I really wanted to show you how capable this plugin is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go up to our effects browser and I'm gonna add a different one. I'm gonna go through and find something that's a little bit more subtle. I like this simple lens DD preset, select it, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. Now, if you're always using the same couple of lens flare presets, they're all gonna appear right here. This is the last several that you've used or selected. And you can use that to make quicker preset selections. But what I wanna do is I wanna go through all of these to find one that really fits my shot. And I think this one does. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. And there we go. We see that our lens flare is not obnoxious. We have a little bit of lens element right here, and we have a lot more God rays going on right here with it right above our sun. Now, if I go and customize it just a tiny bit, I'm gonna go ahead and change the flare color. Right now, it's not exactly the color that I want it to be, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this over to a little more sunny color. and I'm gonna turn on our fog. There we go. We now have a tracked lens flare to our footage in DaVinci Resolve using Boris Continuum Complete 10 and the built-in Mocha BCC option. Now let me play this back for you. And you can see that not only does the flare move naturally, but the lens elements move naturally as well. We're not trying to make a JJ Abrams lens flare, we're just trying to add a little bit of punch to our footage. Now, I hope this tutorial has been useful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.